My name is Kevin Saunders, and I own KGS Studios, the most high-end, grand-scale wall portrait studio anywhere. This is a video on my studio lighting that I developed for my black and white work. It's part of a series I'm producing on my process in creating portraits for the most discerning people in the world. In 2014, I realized I had a lot in common with Yusuf Karsh and George Harrell regarding lighting and the black and white portraits. I like the shadows, the contrast, and the emotion that's told easier in black and white than in color. In fact, I didn't design my color portrait setup until two years later in 2016 due to a combination of demand and another epiphany that I visualized color like John Singer Sargent. Fine art portraiture at this level was a calling and it chose me, not the other way around. Once I knew that this would be my journey, I set about the task of reverse engineering lighting and the black and white set that was so much more complicated and involved, it came first. This video will focus on the first continuous light that I got for the black and white set, the Mole Richardson 412 Junior 2K or 2000 watt movie light. Before this, I was either using strobes or available light. As a result, I had a big learning curve to figure out what happens on a professional movie set and adapt it to my still photographic portraits. I've always looked for used equipment first in new ventures. I did a few months of research to figure out where to start, and a person in Dallas, I found out, was selling four Mole Richardson 2K Junior lights on eBay. He included a dimmer which didn't work. However, the price was right, so I drove to Dallas and picked up four of the dirtiest, most decrepit lights I'd ever seen, plus a big box that he said was a dimmer. I learned later that these lights got rusty and dusty, but as long as the lens was okay and the mechanicals and wiring could be brought back to spec, the lights would eventually function as well as new ones. First, here's the dimmer. Without it, I couldn't use the lights. It's a Berkeley Color Trend dimmer, a 12-channel workhorse, still seen in many churches and small theaters. One person on the East Coast works on these things, and I had him update it to the new modern DMX standard so a new controller would work with it. As you see here, I got a Leviton 12-channel controller and used a 230-amp circuit with 90 amps of capacity. 90 amps is a lot of electrical power, and without it, I would have needed a generator. I was very lucky the studio has this much power, and I stumbled into something that would work exceptionally well on the first try. It taught me what would and would not be possible in my remote studio, which was to come eight years later. The 12-channel dimmer is perfect for the studio. While I started with four lights, I found that eventually eight or nine lights were what I needed to be able to create portraits for clients and design the lighting scheme on the fly. In addition, I realized that for portraits, time constraints were so critical that if I took too long to get the lighting right, an impatient client might lose the emotional edge and I would miss a time window for a perfect portrait. Everything began to revolve around the client experience, and hence my lighting journey was guided by this requirement. Make it easy to adjust the lights, learn what to do in seconds, and keep the client from getting bored and hence losing a pose. Unfortunately, it took me years to figure out how to do this in practice rather than theory. Let's move back to the Junior 2K as it was the foundation for my lighting setup. I'll show you larger and smaller lights in future videos, but this one set the stage for my lighting foundation. All of these Mull Richardson lights are what are called Fresnel lights. The lenses are used in lighthouses and are very efficient in focusing lights. I use all Mull Richardson movie lights because they're so durable and they stay cool better than the Airy or other lighting brands. Plus, they were what was initially available used on eBay. People in Hollywood use Mull lights and on the East Coast, they use Aries. They all work the same, but I like the maroon look, and once I started going down this pathway, I kept acquiring more of the mole lights, so that's the standard for this studio at this point. 
Looking at this light, there's little evidence of its history. I disassembled it, rewired what was needed, cleaned out the rust, dirt, wasp nest, you name it. Then I repainted it. I also put an LED bulb in there, which redefined everything. Let's look at the bulb transition and it'll make more sense. First, the original bulb is here. This is what came with this light and it dates back to the 1950s or earlier. It's enormous and this one is the last of my antique bulbs. Next, see how it changes color from orange to yellow to white and back. This is a massive problem in color work, making the white balance extremely difficult. This problem initiated the creation of many different sized lights. In a movie set, they all were running at full power and to dim the light, either a scrim was required or they opened up the focus if possible or closed it or they moved the light forward or back. This made use of the concept of the inverse square law, and I have to think of that in every, every single time I create a portrait. The next bulb you see here is a halogen, and I have both a 2K and a 1K, or 2,000 watt or 1,000 watt bulb, that fit on the same base. Finally, you can see a VisionSmith LED bulb replacement. I've switched all my larger lights to the Vision Smiths and they are complete game changers. Now I can dim the light and not worry about a color shift. Not only that, I can plug these into regular wall outlets and my remote studio can be set up anywhere in the world. I don't need extra crew, generators, or the headaches that go with them. Here's an example of a Mole 2K light that I recently purchased. It works fine with the hot lights, but I wanted to clean them up for use with LEDs so dust doesn't collect in the electronics and clog the cooling fan. I also check all the connections to ensure that they're tight and all the wiring is in good shape. So I partially disassemble the light, clean it up, and then put it back together again. Now, let's look more closely at what Fresnels can do. This light, as well as all the others, has a focusing lever. It will allow the light to function as a spot or a flood. Notice that when the light switches to spot, it looks brighter, and when it opens up to flood, it seems to dim. That's the inverse square law in action, as the light source is putting out the same number of photons, but they have to cover either a larger or smaller area. This means that if I open up the lens in a portrait session, I have to move the light closer to get the same illumination. I've spent years learning all sorts of compromises, so they seem like second nature now. They didn't come at first, however. I spent years practicing with all kinds of objects in front of the camera, so I'd be able to figure out what to do very quickly when a client arrived. Now I don't even use a meter, other than to set up the remote studio for the first time so I know what the lights will do when a client is present. I hope you found this interesting, and in my next videos, I'll share some of the other Fresnel lights, both bigger and smaller, and then other videos following on will include some of my other processes. Thank you so much for your time.